Hey everyone, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. I welcome you all in this video. So before moving ahead in this video, let me make announcement to you guys. Tomorrow I am going to take a session on June Spotlight 2021. So in that uh, session, in that live session at 10 a.m. in the morning tomorrow, I am going to discuss the questions that were remaining in yesterday's session so do not miss that session guys because a total of 100 questions from the june spotlight will be discussed and revised so that was the announcement now let's move on with our video for today but before that if you have not subscribed our channel till now then do subscribe and hit the bell notification and also you can join this telegram group where we provide you with free quizzes as well as uh, about the updates related to the examinations and this is our first question of the day. Where is the uh, India's first green hydrogen plant being established by the Indian Oil Corporation? So India's first green hydrogen plant is basically being established by this Indian Oil Corporation, which is India's largest oil company for uh, basically. So it is going to establish this uh, hydrogen plant at its refinery which is located in Mathura. So at its Mathura refinery, this green hydrogen plant will be established so that the green hydrogen can be used to process the crude oil. And after processing the crude oil, we all know what kind of products we get. We get petrol, diesel or such kinds of products we get after processing the crude oil. So in the process of processing uh, crude oil, the fuel that will be used would be green hydrogen. Green hydrogen has already been discussed by me when I discussed the India's first green hydrogen mobility facility that is being developed in Ladakh. Guys, remember? But do you know that apart from green hydrogen, there are three other colors in which hydrogen is available. So you have been given a color palette to choose the hydrogen from. So what are the other colors? Basically, every color means something. So first is brown hydrogen this is for your general awareness guys but of course this is important this because i think this is very basic so it is a very basic assumption that you should know what green uh, brown or other colored hydrogen mean because renewable energy is the new sector where the government and the world is going so it is very important from that perspective Next is grey, then we have blue and then we have green. So brown hydrogen is that hydrogen. Basically you need to understand this thing. Hydrogen is a clean fuel in itself but the process through which hydrogen is extracted that process involves the uh, fuel that, the fuel that can be from conventional sources as well as non-conventional sources. For example, this brown hydrogen is obtained through the process of coal gasification. So this coal gasification is the process through which hydrogen is extracted and that hydrogen is then used as a fuel. So this clearly involves fossil fuel. Then the grey hydrogen, this in, uh, requires natural gas. So basically fossil fuels like natural gas. So again, the grey hydrogen is also involving uh, non-renewable resources. Then this blue hydrogen is somewhat semi-renewable. Why I am saying this thing? Because this green, blue hydrogen is basically uses the carbon emitted from this process from uh, making the grey hydrogen. So it is using that carbon as well as greenhouse gas that was emitted during this process to make the hydrogen. So the carbon and the energy and the greenhouse gas that is emitted during this process is captured and then that is used to create energy and that energy is used to extract hydrogen. So that hydrogen is called blue hydrogen. So extract carbon extract I hope that you can uh, memorize it. Carbon extract okay? which is extracted from this process basically. Uh, captured from this process. Green hydrogen therefore is the only source which is completely renewable because 
here we use the renewable energy only in order to extract hydrogen for example if we use solar energy to extract hydrogen wind energy thermal energy hydro energy so that would be the green hydrogen because here completely the uh, renewable energy resource is used to extract hydrogen therefore it is the only renewable hydrogen that is uh, available in the world and it is being focused by different different countries right now particularly india kyunki if you remember recently india has also launched india us hydrogen task force uh guys this hydrogen task force has two chair persons first is ken vincent but who is the other person can you guys tell me the name of the person who is heading this task force from indian side because ken vincent is from us but who is heading this india us hydrogen task force from the indian side tell me in the comment section below this question we have already discussed many times now okay so this second question is also very important which of the following statement is incorrect about dairy investment accelerator so let's first read out the statements here it has been set up by the department of animal husbandry and dairy under its investment facilitation cell option b dairy investment accelerator is a cross functional team constituted to serve as the interface with investors option c it shall provide support across the investment cycle in the dairy sector option d dairy investment accelerator will also create awareness among investors about pm formalization of micro food processing enterprises scheme it will organize events to facilitate industry investor and government interaction of very uh, difficult options are there so which one is the right answer in your opinion the right answer here is option d because this dairy investment accelerator will create awareness about the animal husbandry infrastructure fund that was launched last year as part of the atmanirbhar package so we have already discussed this package which is worth 15000 crore so this is basically the fund that will be used to create the infrastructure for the livestock and dairy sector in india okay that was one thing the next thing here about this dairy investment accelerator is that it has been created under the investment cell that which is written here already now the purpose is to become a platform for the investors so basically this uh this uh, accelerator is focusing on the investors it is providing input to the investors like the availability of startups in india the dairy startups the land and all the things that investors might need in order to invest in india so basically this is going to ease the process of investment in india from the investors side okay so this is first of its kind wherein the, the other party is not focused the startups or the dairy sector uh, dairy sector entities are not very much focused because this is going to provide a platform to the investors so that they can get knowledge about the government schemes how can they avail the benefits of the government schemes like this animal husbandry scheme okay so that would be the function of this dairy investment accelerator of course this is in a way or we can say in the other way around it is helping the dairy invest uh, uh, dairy sector entities only in india but it is just the other way around by prompting the investors by making the process of investment in in india easy for the investors this is how it is going to work so that was all about this dairy investment accelerator i hope that you don't find any kind of trouble in uh, understanding this fund and memorizing it for your exam point of view just remember department of animal husbandry and dairy has launched this accelerator okay on that note i would like to ask a question from you that question is what is the corpus of dairy infrastructure fund so you also know that apart from animal husbandry infrastructure fund we also have a dairy infrastructure investment fund that was created by the central government in the union budget of 17 to 18 can you tell me what is the total corpus of this fund in the comment section below next question is 
which state government is implementing the world's largest blockchain powered educational credentialing system tamil nadu telangana punjab maharashtra kerala right answer is maharashtra so guys what is this first of all the very first point here is that this is being done in partnership with legit doc so this legit doc is basically a blockchain startup based in bangalore theek hai now these two are partnering the maharashtra government and this blockchain startup are partnering to establish this world's largest blockchain powered educational credentialing system in this system only in the initial phase only they have launched 1 million they have issued 1 million diploma certificates to the students in the state of maharashtra now what is the system basically this is a blockchain system from now onwards in the state of maharashtra basically this is in the pilot stage but if this becomes the reality then all the certificates will be issued through the blockchain platform only only and why is it being done because in the documents only you must have seen that in educational documents particularly you see forgery forgery of mark wo hota hai na chote bacche bhi report card mein kar dete hain marks change kar dete hain parents ko dikhane ke liye halanki wo that's very uh, uncommon nowadays but still that practice is there in india at the higher education level as well because now the, nowadays we have digital documents therefore it is easier to change the marks to change the information and in order to curb that forgery of documents this blockchain enabled platform has been launched this basically this entire initiative has been taken by the government of maharashtra to curb the falsification of documents particularly educational documents right now but let's see if this is extended to other documents as well so that is the main purpose now apart from this only three governments in the world right now have such kind of large scale uh, doc, uh, educational document registry blockchain enabled education document registry platform or system theek hai wherein they issue the educational certificates through the blockchain platform so which three countries are these malta singapore and bahrain so these are the three countries now if this project becomes success or even if it is not still india is at present the fourth country that is establishing this platform and if this becomes the success then it is the world's largest block powered education credentialing system education uh, document registry system that has been launched by india then india would become the country to the first country or the country with the largest blockchain powered educational document registry system but right now since maharashtra government has launched it but uh, overall it is the indian government that will be taken into consideration when we are talking about the international fora so here we are comparing the countries therefore it is uh, india but it is not pan india this is this initiative has not been launched pan india it has been launched by the state government of maharashtra so this is the distinction that you need to remember okay so india is the fourth country in the world to have such uh, such a, a blockchain enabled education document system so that was all about this question now let's move on to the next question with which bank has indian navy signed an mou for opening the salary account of its personnel kotak punjab national bank then state bank of india yes bank hdfc which one is the right answer the right answer is kotak mahindra bank in this year only indian army also signed an mou with this bank to have the salary account for its personnel remember the salary accounts for the existing personnel for the working as well as for the retired personnel will be opened retired walon ka because pension goes to the account bank accounts okay now i would like to ask a question from that question is shorya kisan gold credit card is a very important credit card scheme that is provided by a bank from these options you have to name that bank 
which bank issues this shorya kisan gold credit card in the comment section below when is the bank nationalization day observed very important question so the right answer is june 20 this question was asked from you guys in your rva sebi or nabard examination i don't remember the exact exam but yes this question was asked in one of these examinations only back in 2019 so it's uh, around one and a half year therefore i don't remember the examination but yes definitely they, this was a question in the examination of course, the question that has been asked would not be asked again, but still you need to know what when is the bank nationalization day observed in India. So it is June 20 because on June 20, 1969, the nationalization, the first ever nationalization of 14 banks was done. Then in 1980s, 1980 basically, the second round of nationalization was done wherein the six uh, big banks were nationalized. Right now, how many public sector banks are there in India? 12 after the mega merger of public sector banks. Okay, so right now we have 12 public sector banks in India. So, guys, that was all for today. I hope that you have learned something during the video. Thank you so much for watching the video.